Okay, we are live. Good to see everybody. It is now Saturday, April 6, 2024. It is 10.02 a.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Andrew, the Sultan of Silicon, back again with a live unboxing. We have a, a good one here today that we got from Dell here, sent over from Dell, of course. And this is the Dell Latitude 9452-in-1, a follow-up to one of my favorite 2-in-1 business convertibles from last year, the 9440, which has a lot of uh, interesting design cues, uh, one of the more slicker-looking 2-in-1 uh, convertibles out there. There's no doubt about it. And I hope you have had a good week because uh, we've been very busy here on the channel. I got my Dell XPS 14 video out this week. I did, uh, I think I did um, some other stuff. I don't remember. It's been so much, so much stuff lined up that you make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. Um, so hopefully we'll get as many people as we can. We've been having pretty decent turnouts for these live unboxings. Good to see Constantine here. Uh, we got Cameron Bosch. If they really wanted to change the XPS design without alienating their audience, this would have been a decent choice. Unfortunately, they didn't. We can talk more about that today, of course. And then there's uh, Mr. Barry saying, not much of an upgrade. Seems like a good time to find refurbished Latitude 9440 with 32 gigabytes of RAM on sale. That might be one way to go to save some money. There's no doubt. Um, good to see Frank W. Yeah, new unboxing. Good to see our moderator and good friend William Cohen. Another unboxing coming up. Yes. So, yeah, do hit that like button. Thank you, William. HCRPC once again is here. I am here. Good night, sir. Are you fine? I am fine. I hope you're doing well where you are. And Paul Middleton is from, uh, from Stoke-on-Trent, in England, in the UK. So good to see you. I'm glad you're able to join us. Grace is here. Miguel is here. Yeah, well, it does look nice. PK is here. So we got a lot of uh, all the regulars here. So I hope you all are doing well. Now we have about almost 60 of you already. Wow, so a little bit more than I expected so far. So a little bit of a nice turnout so far. We've been getting, again, good results here. So we're going to keep the train moving here. Got a lot of new stuff here in the studio. But let's, uh, let's get to the specs of this unit. What do you say? Uh, this, of course, is the Latitude 9450. So I don't know if I said 9540, but anyway, it's a 9450. But I don't know what I said earlier. But anyway, 14-inch uh, QHD Plus resolution on that display, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, touch display. It is IPS, 500 nits of brightness, anti-reflective, anti-smudge coating, 
Intel Core Ultra 7 165U, a 12 core processor that's uh, two performance cores, eight, of, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, two performance cores, eight efficient cores, and two low power efficient cores. And then you also get uh, the integrated graphics. So I believe this is going to be, I guess, like XE, I would imagine. I don't think it's the ARC. It doesn't meet the standard for ARC. We'll talk about that. I guess the U series. I'm not sure if it does. Up to 64 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM running at the very fast 74, 67 megahertz. I think we have 32 on our review unit. Up to a ter two terabytes of storage. I think you can configure this, but of course, this is upgradable. It is a smaller M.2 2230 form factor, so just keep that in mind, but uh, it is upgradable. And then, of course, you have 60 watt hour battery here. And it does support express charge. I'm expecting good battery life. We got a good battery life last year, hopefully this year. It does have the Wi-Fi 7, which is always good to see. Bluetooth 5.2. Now, oh, 5.4, 5 I should say, not 2. And then uh, as we move over to the next panel here, as it changes over any moment now, yes, here it is. You get a pretty uh, nice size here as far as the physical stature of it. It's got a minimum weight, according to their specs, of a 3.38 pounds or 1.537 kilograms. And then maximum weight, I guess, depending how you spec it out, I guess, 3.5 pounds or 1.591 kilograms. It's got a 1080p camera. It is HDR IR camera, according to that. I, and of course, that's going to allow you to log in. Face recognition, I believe it also has a fingerprint scanner that also allows you to log in with the Windows Hello. Quad speakers with Waves Max audio and should be pretty interesting sound. I like having quad speakers, as you know. It's got that really nice graphite color. It's got the ports here, three Thunderbolt, four ports, and a audio jack. And we'll talk more about that. Not cheap, of course, as a lot of these business-focused laptops will uh, not be the cheapest thing. Again, they have a lot of security features in them, and these companies tend to buy these in bulk, and they will get pretty nice discounts from Dell when they buy these in bulk. So just keep that in mind. And, of course, Dell does run a lot of sales, so always check the link in the description below for the latest pricing. Yeah, a little bit pricey here, but we'll see what we get out of the box here as this is what we can expect here with the 9450 2-in-1 convertible here okay so i think we have enough people here we have about 70 of you watching or so and good to see jay valencia good to see aaron payne is this a matte display it should be an anti-reflective coating on it we're gonna get it out in a moment so you know the drill folks without further ado let's get this out of the box Okay, so we got some Latitude branding there. Let's take this inner box out. I don't know if there's anything else here. Looks like that's it for this box. I don't think there's anything else here. Nah, I think that's it. So let's put this to the side. Welcome to Dell. Let's do great things together. We've seen this packaging before. Feels pretty nice. Again, the build quality I'm expecting to be top notch on this. And then let's see what else we get here. We get some documentation, pretty standard paperwork here. Latitude 9450. You get uh, some warranty information, yada, yada, yada. You know, all that crap. It's not crap. I shouldn't say that. It does have, I think, three year on site warranty, which is a really nice. Um, thing included. I believe that be, that comes standard, by the way. When I, I never mention that, and I always mean to, and I think that's a big deal, actually. So they also give you this little adapter, a USB-A to USB Type-C, and you can see it there. Again, another nice little touch there by Dell to give you, again, little, little things here. You're paying a premium here. Now, you do get a 65-watt USB Type-C adapter, and this has got to be one of the more compact form factors from Dell. Obviously, 65 watts will be certainly enough for this processor in this unit, so we'll get a measurement of the total travel weight. And then, of course, you get your power charger, or the power cord here, rather, 
part of that power charging system. And then of course that little dongle and that's it. So pretty, uh, pretty standard stuff from Dell that we've seen. Okay. And we'll put this to the side. We'll get the, again, the total travel weight. And there she is, and she is a beauty. Wow. So this is that graphite color, and you can see it here. This is the underside right there. And then this is the beautiful graphite. And again, we saw the graphite on the XPS 14 and the XPS 16. We saw the platinum. So this is the graphite. This is the only color I believe it's offered in. And the link is not working, David. All right, I'll check the link when we're done just to make sure that uh, everything's working properly with the link. If it's not working, I'll redo it when we're done. Okay, there you go. It does open with one finger. Okay. And wow. So this is a really nice, and you can get a look at it here. This is a really nice overall build here. Now, we, one thing you will notice here is this collaboration haptic touchpad and this will work with zoom and i believe it also according to their website also works with teams i don't think that was the case when we, we looked at the 9440 last year at least not initially and now you get it with this now this does support the pen i don't know i i don't think dell sent over a pen obviously i have a million of these pens but this one doesn't work with that one let me see if this one again i probably have a pen here somewhere uh let's try this one real quick yeah, this one works. And again, I don't know. This one is like a generic one. I don't know who makes it HP, maybe. I don't know. I don't think Dell makes this. But anyway, it does work with the Dell pen and does have pen support. It is a two in one convertible. You can use your finger, you can use the pen. Now, 2560 by 1600 resolution. Again, this is a collaboration haptic touchpad. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at the port selection before we get a measurement of the weight, and let's uh, move this over here for a second, and then let's move to this camera here. So on the left side is the fact uh, that you do get two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now, moving over to the right side is your 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And you do get a third USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port and a Kensington lock port to round it out. So no USB-A, although they do give you that dongle in the box or that little adapter, I should say. And I think it's a pretty nice looking laptop. And there's the keyboard layout. Now the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner, as you can see there. It's got the zero lattice keyboard. And the zero lattice keyboard is actually one of my favorites. I like it on the Dell XPS 14. Now one di difference, of course, is the fact that this does have a physical function row where the XPS 14 does not. So, or the XPS 16 for that matter. So a lot of you are saying this should have been the design or along these lines, something like this, that they should have done on the, uh, the XPS 14. Well, we'll talk about that. Let's get a measurement of the weight. Let me get my scale out here and let's close this up for now. Now the build quality is looking really good. We'll talk about that right after the measurement of the weight. So let's turn on our, our, our scale here and let's put it on kilograms. So with just the unit alone, okay, let's get everything set up here. So with just the unit alone, you're looking at 1.564, 1.563 kilograms, and that would be three pounds, 7.1 ounces. So, you know, it's got a little bit of heft there, a little substantial weight there, but nothing to write home about. And with the power cord and the power charger, four pounds, 1.7 ounces, and that would be 1.863 kilograms all in for a total travel weight. So there you go. That is the weight measurement of it. Let's turn that off, put that to the side for now. And then... Let's uh, look at the build here. So as you can see here, I see very little give in the chassis. Very good, rock solid, all metal build. And obviously you can open the useless test of the day with the one finger. 
oh, hardly any screen flex. This is a really, really nice build. Nice that they have minimal screen wobble, which is something that the two-in-one convertibles usually have a lot more of. This hinge, The hinges on this are really good. And hardly any, maybe a little bit over here, a little flex in the deck here. But nothing. I mean, this is just a rock solid build. You got the collab. This is a haptic touchpad, collaboration haptic touchpad. We'll take a look at that. And then, of course, this is a, this is a convertible, so you can put it into the different modes. That is the tent mode. Obviously, great for recipes in the kitchen if you're on your downtime or doing presentations. And then, of course, you got the tablet mode or the. That's of course we'll talk about that in a moment. And then you can do stand or presentation mode, as you see here. And then, of course. The tablet mode, great for use with the pen. Now, I don't have the actual pen from Dell, but again, this works with this pen here that I have lying around. I got a million of these pens. Uh, pretty nice, and you can take notes, sketch out diagrams, artwork, whatever you need to do. Uh, take notes in a meeting. This certainly is designed for that. So I think it's looking pretty good so far. And um, again, the design here is something that a lot of people wanted. Now. We can bring out, let's take a look at this. Let's put this over to the left here. And then this is the XPS 14, right? So I have a little bit of fingerprints already on it, but that's what the graphite shows a little bit more. Now, you tell me, okay, they went with the capacitive row here, and this is the physical row. Again, a very similar zero lattice keyboard both have the haptic touchpad this is an all glass one this one is you can see is clearly delineated right there so pretty interesting nonetheless both have uh touch displays this has pen support but you can see it here they are very similar in layout but i want to know what you think do you think this should have been the design for this one uh very interesting debate obviously the capacitive row has spurred a lot of controversy. A lot of people don't like it. Some people are vehemently against it. I don't care. I mean, it's not, not an issue for me. I've been using this and I've had no issues with it. It's not hindered me in any way. Would I like, would I prefer a physical escape key and a physical function row? Probably, yeah, I would. But that is not what we get here, okay? So that is these two together. There you can see them side by side. You can see very similar footprint in thickness. It's almost identical, although there's a little difference. Maybe you can see from this angle here. There's a little difference here, but pretty identical footprint between the XPS 14 and the Latitude. And then as far as thickness, if those wondering, there are, they are very, very similar here. Um, maybe the 2-in-1 has a little bit more thickness, again, to accommodate that 360-degree hinge. You can see a little bit more over there. But in the end of the day, I think these are both very, very nice looking laptops. There is no doubt about it. But I want to know what you think. Again, let me know in the comment section below. If you're watching this in the replay, let me know. Again, same graphite, pretty much, same, pretty much there. So we're going to put this to the side. I just wanted to show you the physical differences between the two and the similarities between the two. And there you can see. Now, the display here. And we'll get to your comments and questions. It is a glossy display. It does have an anti-reflective coating. But there it is. That is the display. And as far as I'm concerned, I liked it last year a lot. And the, one of the reasons it does get pretty bright, again, 500 nits of brightness in cl that's claimed by Dell here. It's an IPS display. It's not OLED like you get on the uh, XPS 14. But this is definitely a, a very doable display in terms of the display here as far as being crisp sharp and everything it should really be very good to use on a daily basis especially to get work done it is 16 to 9 10 rather 16 to 10 aspect ratio like we're seeing in a lot of laptops here so that is definitely the way that you want to go with this okay now let me plug in my dock here it's a thunderbolt dock i'll plug into this one right here and we can get an idea of some of the specs that we're dealing with here as that loads in. And you can see it here, obviously, we're now connected up. I didn't connect to my network yet. I'll do that in a moment. But let's go to the system uh, specs here. 
And obviously this, of course, is gonna have the Core Ultra 7, the 165U. This does have V Pro. So, and I'll show you the sticker, it's on there. You probably noticed it already. 32 gigabytes of RAM. These can be outfitted with 64 gigabytes. Again, it is not upgradable by the user. It's soldered in, but it is that faster 74, 67 megahertz. And this should have a terabyte of storage here. So let me go to the file explorer here. And this PC does have a terabyte of storage, or let's see, it's got, uh, yeah, these are my other, I see, I'm sorry, 512 gigabytes of storage. It's kind of a little bit on the low side, actually. Um, but it does have a 2230 form factor SSD. So that means it will have um, that smaller one, physically smaller one. I don't know if there's room for a fuller 2280 size one. Again, when I open it up in the full review, we'll definitely check that out. All right, so let's go back here. Let's get to some of your comments and questions right now. For a business uh, type of PC, no SD card reader. They should at least put in a dongle with a USB-A and SD card reader instead of just a USB-A dongle. dongle. Yeah, I agree, William. It would have been nice to have at least a micro SD card reader, not even a full size. They don't give you that. Good evening from Jan. Jan Honrick, how are you? Uh, good evening to Nadine as well. I saw her here earlier. There you go. Capacitive keys are a mistake on the XPS. Okay, a lot of people feel that way. Uh, Spectre 14X360 over this overpriced crap anytime. Well, Dennis, uh, tell us how you really feel. Again, that is a consumer-based laptop convertible. This is a business-focused. They don't offer the V Pro that a lot of these businesses will, uh, will need. So that is one thing you'll have to keep in mind. I love the Spectre X360. I think it's one of the best laptops in 2024. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that keyboard is perfect. Are you talking about... The Latitude keyboard, I am imagining you're saying that. Uh, Mr. Berry, I do like the USB Type-A adapter, very handy for uploading USB stick drives. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, the, would I like a physical USB-A port on the unit? Absolutely would have been great. But the bottom line is, is that at least they give you that in the box. Like something like Apple, who added on ports because people were complaining, you're lucky to, I always say this, you're, always, you're lucky to even get a power adapter in the box at this point. So, you know, you never know with them. Link is not working. Again, David, I don't know. We'll have to see it. Probably because of ad blocking. I don't know. So are these business version of XPS laptops? This is a business-focused laptop. You are correct. Um, XPS is a consumer-based, first and foremost, although a lot of businesses can use them. But I think it's consumer-focused. This, of course, is going to be the business-focused one. And again, when you look at the price, keep in mind, this is priced uh, competitively with other business-focused laptops, say from the Elite Book line, from HP, from the ThinkPad line, from Lenovo. So they will pay more. You will; Those companies do pay more. They don't blink at the price point. Just keep that in mind. It's not geared towards consumers. And they do get a lot of discounts from Dell uh, when they do buy these in bulk. And they do buy them in bulk. So just keep that in mind. Um, according to Dave, how are you doing? Do you think that Dell, HP, et cetera, make too many models of laptops with overlapping features? Dell does the Vostro, the Inspiron, the XPS, Latitude. Do you think manufacturing could simply simplify things for consumers? I mean, they could make it a little bit easier. I know a lot of these brands do that. But you also have to keep in mind that this is a business line, right? Latitude is a business, and they keep that separate from, say, the XPS line or, say, from the Inspiron line. Those are consumer-focused lines, right? So this will definitely be focused towards businesses, and you just have to keep that in mind. What is the Core Ultra AI story? Well, you know, to be honest with you, not much right now. Now, you do get the co-pilot button here, right? So you do get the co-pilot button. Right now, it's pretty much limited to the use of that MPU that we're talking about here, the neural processing unit, to the background blur effect, to the autofocus, auto framing, rather, on the... Um, studio effects in the camera and we'll take a look at that in a little bit but right now there's not much now from what i understand i know that adobe is going to be making a, their suite compatible and using the ai or the npu that this has so you'll see more of that as we go along here in 2024 because ai has been the big story right for 2024 all right let me put this on me i'm gonna put this uh tap tap temp to tap blah 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 tongue tie i'm gonna 
uh, connect to my network. That's what I wanted to say. Feels good. I, I like the zero lattice keyboard, to be honest with you. I do like it. And it's nice to have the function row. So it is nice to have that, right? So, all right. So now I'm connected up. Let me uh, download. Let me say sync without my data, blah, blah, blah. Continue without this data. It's a nice display. The haptic uh, touchpad is pretty nice so far. It's got a nice haptic engine. Again, it has the 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 row here, the um, collaboration touchpad. They're calling it the collaboration haptic touchpad. In fact, uh, let me bring up this before we get our first benchmark. You can see here. This is their little promotion that they're put it. They I found on the internet on YouTube that Dell has a haptic collaboration touchpad. And again, it's okay. I look do if you do a lot of Zoom calls. I know a lot of business users do. If you do Teams, this will be very handy for you because then you're able to uh, use the you know haptic uh, com the capacitive row there. Again, not a big deal to me, but for those that do a lot of video conferencing. You definitely will get a lot of use out of that. There's no doubt about it. I would imagine it's pretty convenient to turn the camera off, to mute it, and all that stuff. So there you go. Now I'm going to do Geekbench. Let me go to the Geekbench while this is running still. So geekbench.com. And again, this is a pretty nice haptic touchpad. Yeah, the haptic engine is very good. So that's the that's the little promotion there that they did, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let me download Geekbench 6 for Windows. Let me lower the scaling. It's a little too high for my liking. So let me go here. You can see what I'm doing there. And again, I believe this is going to be 60 hertz. And I think that's not a big deal because 2560 by 1600. Let's lower this to 175. It's a little bit better. And then let me go to the advanced display settings. It's 60 hertz. Could go down to 48 hertz. Again, not a high refresh rate display. And I don't think for a business user that's going to be too much of a big deal. I think they're more interested in getting more longevity and battery life. I think that's going to be the focus. And it's a very sharp display. If you see it here in person, you'd probably agree with me. It's a pretty nice looking display. All right. So the thing is downloaded here. And let's open that up. And then we'll go to the My Dell. If it, I think this one uses the My Dell. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe not. So this probably has the Dell command. They always change it. You know, it's always like different. They're different brands or they're different sub brands use different things. So let's see. This is the update. I, I don't remember now, to be honest with you. Let's go to settings. So this is all for like updates and stuff. Advanced driver, restore, import, update, update settings, general. Okay, this doesn't, this is, I don't know what this, this is okay, that's fine. So this is to get like Dell command, this is the updates and stuff. So is it the Dell power manager? I got to remember now. I don't think that is a thing even. Dell peripheral manager, Dell optimizer. Let's try that. I think it's the Dell optimizer. <laughs> I, I forget. I should probably do my homework before I do these live streams. But you know what? I'm so busy right now. We'll do it on the fly. All right, let's get started. Let's exit the wizard. I don't need this. Okay, let's just get to the meat and potatoes here. Okay, yeah, whatever. Okay, I think we're in it. Yeah, it's a Dell Optimizer. Now I remember correctly. And now let's go to the power. And let's go to... So right now, it's this is the dynamic charging okay thermal management is what we want to do right now it's on optimize we'll put it on ultra performance and so now it's on ultra performance and i'll change the window settings to make sure that's in out of the balance mode here let's put it in the best performance so far the the i'm listening here and the fans are pretty low i gotta say it's pretty low Again, I haven't updated anything, so we'll just get a quick and dirty score, and I'll do a full run of this, of course, in the full review. Yeah, I know some of you are waiting for my Omen 14. That is done. I just have to schedule it for just a few more edits on it, but it's pretty much done, to be honest. Uh, I'll probably release that next day or so. So just Omen 14, Transcend, coming up. All right, so this is the Ultra 7 165U. Let's get the CPU going and let it take some of your comments and questions. 
Uh, not going to be a powerhouse in speed in terms of power here. This is not what it's meant. This is going to give you great battery life. It's going to be great for productivity, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, and everything. So there you go. Waiting on HP Omen. It's still coming. I promise you, it's done. It's pretty much done. I just have to f finalize it. What is we talked about the core ultra AI stuff? I will talk about the speakers. We'll get a we'll get a a, a good sample of that later on. So far, it looks like a two and one is doing well with the fingerprints. Yeah, it's not bad. Although you know the graphite will show a little bit, you know, over time, like we saw on the XPS fourteen. I didn't wipe that down. You can see it here. It's a pretty nice looking two in one, and I like it. I mean, you walk into a boardroom meeting, into a cafe. This thing is pretty awesome looking. I think uh, it's a little bit more minimalist. It gives off a really classy look. I really do like it. Hardly any fan noise. In fact, right now as I'm running this, and again, not a too much of an intensive benchmark, but just to give you an idea, let me get this out here. Low 30, uh, mid 30s rather, not too bad. Again, we haven't really pushed it to the limit yet. But so far, quiet is one of the things we want to see on a business laptop. That's important. You don't want to have to contend with fan noise, especially when you're getting trying to get work done. Yeah, it's a very nice PC, uh, William. It definitely is very nice. Again, would have been nice to include that. There's no, def no doubt about it. What is the deal with the Surface Laptop 6 only for business? Yeah, Jan, um, man, I'm not... You know, don't get me started on, on Microsoft. I don't know what the deal is. It's sort of like they're hiding that for some reason. You know, they only released it for business and the Surface Pro 10 for business and the Surface Laptop 6 for business. Uh, I don't get any review units from them. And I'm not about to go spend that money to buy them, to be honest, when I know that the ARM versions with the Snapdragon X Elite are coming out for that very soon, so I'll go out and buy those. Again, I, I don't expect to get anything from Qualcomm. I don't expect to get anything from Microsoft if the history has been any indication, so there you go. Uh, I don't think it's a much of a big deal, it's the business versions of these. I mean, I, I don't know. It would be nice if they sent me one, but I, I'm not going to go out of my way. Uh, next, I would love a Surface Pro or Dell XPS 14. Um, I think you're better off with the Dell XPS 14, to be honest with you, but that's just me. Okay, so this is running the benchmark here. You can see it going over here. We have 94 of you watching, and we have 50 likes. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. This will certainly uh, get this spread out over YouTube. It certainly helps me out. Do me that solid. It'll be great. Yeah, I mean, the Surface Pro 10 is nice, but the pricing is horrible. $16.99 for 16 gigabytes of RAM with the Ultra 7U. Yeah, it's it's. I would skip that. I Look, I've done the Surface line over the years. I went out and bought each and every one of them, and they did very well on the channel. But for Microsoft to not even, you know, acknowledge me anymore at this point, uh, they're, 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 uh, they're dying on the vine. I don't see them surviving there. Thank you, Duck Vision, for the super sticker. I appreciate that. All right, my friend. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Little applause for you. I was torn about which Dell to buy, but finally decided on a Framework 13, and your review helped a lot. Wow, you know, that is a really nice laptop. The Framework 13 is a lot of modularity, upgradability, serviceability. I certainly appreciate that, you know, and, and that is certainly uh, nice. And I, I would like to get more stuff from Framework as they produce more stuff of course that'll be great so here we get our result here and we got a 2389 single core and a 9817 multi-core again not going to be this is a u series right so it's not going to be as powerful as the h series as we saw on some of these meteor lake so that is that let me take a screenshot 
Okay, and let's test the graphics again. Into Intel graphics, I think this is going to be like like Iris XE. It's not going to be Arc level of graphics, and that I think they're going to they reserve for the H series, I believe. Yeah, the hey Nadine, yeah. The, the specs and pricing of the M3 Max, I don't have to tell you. You know what I think about it. it got nice laptops. Look, don't get me wrong. I use a MacBook Pro on a daily basis with the 40, with the M3 Max. Now, is it worth $31 or $3,200? Absolutely not. Uh, I feel totally ripped off by it, but, you know, I use it, and it gets the job done. But I feel like it could be a lot less. You know, they, I think they're overcharging. And don't get me started on the MacBook Air. That is a ripoff as far as I'm concerned. If you're going to get a MacBook, get the MacBook Pro. Spend a little bit more money. Well, unfortunately, you have to spend a lot more money. But you know what I'm saying. I think that, especially if you're going to do any heavy sustained workloads, there you go. Where are you from? I'm from New York. I'm from New York. Forget about it. Is this, okay, excellent review of this Latitude 9450. It's not a review. It's a live unboxing, but yeah, I get the drift. The Core Ultra UV Pro processor has the Iris XE, right? Yeah, I believe it does. Should have 96 execution units, but uh, again, I'll have to look into that. MacBook Air is way better. Okay, that's fine. Okay, it's, it's okay. Just don't pay this. Just do me a favor. Don't pay that $600 premium to go from uh, 512 gigabytes <laughs> to two terabyte. Please don't do that. So, oh, you like it better than the Pro? Well, now, now you're talking blasphemy. Please, come on. Again, now I think you're just being, you're joking around, I think. But come on, let's get serious, people. With Apple, you just need to spend a little bit more money. Oh, yeah, well, you know, just more money. It's only money, right? <laughs> it's okay they're forcing you to spend that money what size is the battery it's a I believe it's a 60 watt hour battery let's bring out the specs here yeah it's a 60 watt hour and it does support express charge so dell is good though i like the company okay i'm glad you like them uh, I bet your fam I, I bet your family back in New York must have been a little shook from the earthquake. You know, a lot of my family's no longer there, but uh, there was an earthquake yesterday. I have some friends there, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit uh, jarring, a little. I guess I would imagine. I, again, I have felt earthquakes here in Las Vegas, obviously in California, but uh, yeah, not New York. We don't really hear about it all that often. Although there were have been a few over the years. But it was I think it was a 4.8 on the Richter scale. So Nadine has a 27-inch Apple desktop and very old MacBook Pro. I need a new laptop. Okay. And again, I'm not bashing Apple for the product itself. The product's fine. It's fine. It's just overpriced, the MacBook Air. It's over, and so is the MacBook Pro, but I can't fault them all that much because all the other companies are overpriced right now, as I mentioned. So 64 executional, ex, executional units? I, I don't know. I think that's what you're trying to say. Love from Nepal. Nepal, how are you? I had two Dells before I switched to the MacBook Pro, the M2, and it's been a year, and I regret it. Well, okay. It's not made for what I needed to do, but the battery life is incredible. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, there you go. See? Battery life on the Macs are going to be a strong suit, obviously. Um, the sound on them are excellent. But if you need a touch display, obviously some people don't care about that, but some people do. There's no no dice. If you game on you want if you're any serious gamer, no dice on the MacBook. And please don't tell me about the emulation and all that stuff. I don't want to hear that. It's not the same. And then just not enough titles either. And then if you are wanting to upgrade the storage yourself, no dice. So, I mean, there are some downsides, obviously. And the price, right? The price is the big one. Which brand do you like more, HP or Dell? I don't like one more than the other. I like anything. They, I like a company that makes a good product that's priced reasonably, I guess, and that makes a good tool for the job at hand. I'm even willing to pay the premium if I have to, but uh, it has to be the right tool for the job. I ran the same test twice, and I've done this now two live streams in a row, but at least we get a similar... We get a little bit of a different result here. 2391 now 
on that single chord, maybe a little bit higher, I think. Let me take a screenshot. Now we can do this one, which is going to be the GPU. I think x86 has potential to be way more efficient than it is right now. Intel just doesn't want to. Intel, Intel's got a lot of soul searching to do right now. Okay, so, and there you go. I mean, that's the bottom line. I'm looking forward to the Snapdragon X Elite. I think there's a little bit of too much hype on it. I think we need to temper our expectations. I think the controlled environments and the very controlled benchmarks that they leaked or showed or whatever you want to call it have been very um, skewed in one way, I guess. It's not really telling you the whole story, but I think it gives us a glimpse of what we can expect and hopefully it'll be good in, in real world and in the consumers' hands. With all the brands raising the prices on PCs this year, it makes me wonder if there was some collusion among manufacturers. Who knows? I, look, you don't. I don't know. I think I think Apple started a trend with these very very high premiums, walled garden, all that stuff, and then soldering everything in. Everybody followed, forcing you to do their ridiculous upgrades with the exorbitant prices, the price gouging, you know. But in the end of the day, you have to use the tool that works for you. And Nadine, you have, you're an artist and a photographer, and you can use AirDrop. That works great between the iPad, and you don't like using Windows, so. That's a tool that works for you. And I use a MacBook Pro. I don't hide that. I said I have a MacBook Pro. For, I spent 3200 plus tax or whatever it was. And uh, it's been pretty, pretty good. Does YouTube chats load slowly for a while? I don't know. Check your internet connection. I got the Dell XPS 15. And it started getting faster. And the keyboard starting extruding out. And so they gave me a choice of laptops, and I couldn't get another 15, which I would have preferred. Okay. So these are like X XE. Yeah, this would be like XE graphics numbers here. So ARC would be about 35,000. This is about 17,500, whatever. Yeah, that makes about, that's about right. All right, so we're done with that. Let's um, bring this back over here. Now, again, the display looks pretty nice. Again, I have a lot of studio lights. You can see it there. And again, you have a convertible. You can obviously get the nice viewing angle. Very little screen wobble. Look at that. Nice. So when you're typing, it's nice and sturdy, and I love that. All right, let's uh, take a look at the camera real quick. Now, it is an IR camera. Okay. And it has the Windows Studio effects, and you can see it here. So let me go to the settings here. Photo, okay. So the video settings is 1080p, okay. And we can go back over here. So one of the things with this Meteor Lake laptop is you have the NPU, right? So that means you can do the studio or the AI effects. You can see it here. So auto framing. That one works pretty good, actually. That's a pretty quick reaction. So it always keep you in frame, right? And then... We turn that off. Eye contact, you always look at your subject. And then background, you got the standard blur and then the portrait blur, all done and handled by the MPU. The camera looks really good. And I'll give you a sample in the upcoming review uh, as far as the audio, and you'll get the whole picture here. But so far, camera, very sharp, very sharp. Let me turn off the background blur. Wow, actually, this is a really good camera. And one of the things I like is, you can see here, such a small bezel. So that was the other thing that I wanted to point out is that with the the, uh, the MacBook with the notch, I really, I'm starting to figure out, well, why do they have a notch? It's an eyesore, doesn't look right. It's just the cutout in the middle there. But it, they're not giving you face ID, no IR camera, no, no face recognition like you get here. And I like having that. I think that's a really nice feature, and you don't get that, right? So I'm not really sure what Apple's doing there. It's a high time I think they do that. Looks great. Love the background blur. I think, Nadine, this is one of the nicer cameras I've seen out there right now. And this thing is looking really good. Very nice, actually. This might be the best-looking camera so far of 2024. Now, the subject is maybe a little bit uh, not so much, but but the camera looks good. All right. I, I think it looks good. All right. So that is the camera. 
kudos to Dell on that. Passes the test here. William liked it. As long as William likes it, Nadine likes it, I think we're in good shape. Best camera I've seen. I, David, you might be on to something there. Most irritating with MacBook is you can't clean it without putting it on. Yeah, that, yeah well, that's always going to be, you know, there's a lot of that. That should be the least of the problems with that. And the other thing I like about this is pretty nice small bezels, which, you know, if you ever used any business laptops, that's not the first priority, right? The aesthetics are not the first priority, but I think they did a good job here. And I, I agree, Mr. Berry, very, very nice camera. All right, I'm going to load in a benchmark here. I want to see uh, Cinebench 2023 or R23, I should say. And the reason I'm going to do that one, I saved 2024 for the video. It takes a little bit longer, but I want to save it for the full review. But I'm going to move over the 2023 version here. And I will um, get that loaded in here. If I can figure out what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get used to this this haptic touch, but it is actually pretty nice. There we go. Okay, now I'm not doing it really well here, people. Where did Cinebench, did I put it in a folder? Just give me a second. You know what? Let me just download it. Make it easier. Sorry about that. Cuz I want to I want to test the thermals and I want to test the um this fan noise. And so far, it's been actually really quiet. Are there any heating issues with the new Meteor Lake? I think they're a little bit more efficient, to be honest with you. Uh, but, of course, we'll have to see how that's all going to play out. Uh, again, each laptop has different thermal solutions. So one may be a little bit better than the other when it comes to So far, this is probably the quietest laptop I've used uh, from a Meteor Lake laptop in 2024 so far. Again, I still have to do all my testing, but I think you can get the drift here. So uh, we're going to do Cinebench R23. I'm going to get a measurement of the actual fan noise when we put it under load keyboard is really good so i know grace is asking how's the keyboard very very good it's that zero lattice keyboard the haptic touchpad i'm getting a little bit used to it again everyone is a little bit different right so when we went from the sensor haptic touchpad i don't know makes this one maybe it is sensor i don't know but this one i have to get reacclimated because it's maybe i have to fine tune it in the settings again easily done but the bottom line is it's a really nice looking uh laptop great zero lattice keyboard i'm liking the tactility this is a very nice now the keys aren't quite as close together as it is on the xps 14 those are a little bit more closer these are more island like just a little bit more but so far it's been pretty good all right so we're getting our cinebench r23 going here just to give it a second or maybe a little bit more than that Now I hear the fans going a little bit more, and we'll, we'll, we'll measure that in a moment. Okay. Let's extract that. Don't you showcase desks? Yes, I do. I do plenty of desktops. I did the Dell XPS desktop. I did a lot of the towers, the Omen tower I did. I do quite a bit, actually. I should do more. I do all-in-ones. I do quite a bit. I try to vary stuff on the channel. I do some gaming laptops. They don't do quite as well as others. I do business-focused. I know a lot of the laptop reviewers don't do business like I do. I do professional-grade laptops, workstations. Yeah, it's not great value, but again, when I say that this is a business laptop, what does that mean? It's not meant for the consumer. So when companies buy these small to medium businesses or larger businesses, corporations, um, I think it's going to make this whole thing more palatable because you're buying them in bulk and you get really nice discounts. So just keep that in mind. As the buyers of these companies, you're looking for 
volume and discounts, and they do get that. So when you're buying one for, say, 2500 to 3000 it's not a great proposition for you, the consumer. There are better laptops. Look at the XPS, not the XPS, look at the, uh, the Spectre X360. It's a lot cheaper. Look at the, the Yoga Slim 7i that I just took a look at. I have a, the next uh, Asus I'm looking at, I'm looking at two of them, uh, about $1,000 or sub-$1,000. We're looking at OLED displays. We'll be talking about that very soon in the ZenBook line. And I got to tell you, looking good. I have a, a Vivo book from Asus that, uh, that's coming next week as well. OLED, more of a value proposition. So again, there you'll be. When will the short, this will be available uh, very soon. Probably takes me about a week. So expect it in about a week, this video. But there are a lot of value propositions out there. You won't get the high refresh rates. You won't get a lot of the other features you'd get and say the you know laptops sort of two, three hundred, four hundred dollars more and above that. So yeah, would the framework laptops make a good business option? Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Okay, so here's the Cinebench. Let's load that in. This keyboard on the XPS 14, and I would have bought the XPS 14. I wouldn't be surprised if next year you might see this keyboard on the XPS 14 and 16. But I don't, I, I don't know anything. I'm just guessing. Based on the reaction I've seen on the comment section and other reviews and so forth, I don't mind the capacitive row on the XPS 14. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. But again, like I said, if it's not for you, don't look at Move on. Go to another laptop, you know. Buy the MacBook if you like the MacBook. All right, so let me do a uh, modified test here. Let's go to preferences. Let's do a five-minute test. And we're going to do the CPU first, so let's get that running. And what I'm going to do, let me get out my thermal imaging camera here, and I want to test the surface temperatures as this heats up and as it you know moves along here. Let me get my... Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that I used with that right here. Loving it. Again, I don't love their Galaxy Book 4 line, as you know, but I do love their Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra here. My favorite so far. So let me uh, load this in. And then we'll, when we're done with that, we'll get a measurement of the sound in a moment. If I could ever get this loaded in, so it's been giving me a little bit of fits lately. Just give me a second. Hold on. Sometimes you just got to adjust this to get it right so it makes a good connection because it has to work with the USB-C on this one. So while this is loading in, let's at least get this, this let's get this done so you don't hear dead air. Okay, let's see here. So about 45 over here which is where the heat is dissipating. But over here, relatively cool. No hot spots here, so that's good.
about 47 over here, lukewarm. It's not hot. Not bad. Okay, not bad. Now, let's do the let's redo the sound test here for the fan noise because I'm seeing in the 40s, which is not too bad. But I want to make sure we're getting it as it's heating up even more. And maybe it's going to go even higher. We'll see. So let me put this back over here. Okay, so in the 40, low 40s, not bad. That's on the full load here. So, so far quiet and pretty cool. Okay, so here we have an attorney who just bought one. The other day will be here April 9th, 32 gigabyte Ultra 7. Spicy on the price, but will it be worth it, I hope. You know, that's up to you. I can't tell you, uh, you know, as an attorney, I would think it'll be fine. It's pretty quiet from... Compared to, yeah, the fan noise went down a little bit, actually. So it started off in the mid-40s, and then I think it went down to the low 40s. High to mid-40s, and then down to the lower 40s. Again, I'll do more testing, but not bad. What have happened to the dude you're getting a Dell guy? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Sorry, Andrew. Isn't the precision better for business? Precision is a professional workstation. That's different. This is more for, you know, small to medium businesses. This will be good for large corporations. Professional, the precision line is like the, uh, you know, it's a workstation, right? So what is a workstation? Workstations more, it could be used in business. There's no doubt about it. But they're more like doing high-end video editing, say in a, a studio, a, a, t a television studio or movie studio. High-end graphics, 3D rendering, architects would use that. That's where the precision line comes in. Where the latitude line comes in to do more of office work, right? So if you do, you know, web browsing, you're doing um, spreadsheets, Microsoft Office, those things, you're going to want something like this. You want quad the key thing is great battery life. If you're on a business trip, on an airplane, you need to get spreadsheets done. You need to get work done. This is the type of laptop that will do it. Now, they do offer this also, I believe, with 5G. That's another option you can go with. It's an added cost. But again, companies are not going to blink at these costs when it's all said and done. As long as it's the right tool for the job, they're going to roll these out as an entire fleet. They're going to buy these in bulk. They're going to get their discount. And there you go. Everyone fighting heat. I prefer the performance with less noise, but benchmarks sell better. So benchmarks are not really why people are buying this. They're buying this for the battery life. They're buying this for the quiet performance, hopefully quiet. It's getting, it's ramping up a little bit now and the less heat. You don't want to burn your lap. And right now it's pretty cool to be honest with you. So you're not buying that for that. And then the intangibles, right? The V Pro, the security features for IT departments to be able to service these easily in numbers and so forth. So I think those are the things you start to look at when you're looking at a business-focused laptop like this. So the Lockwood Legal Group has a desktop in his office with a Verizon 9, an Alienware 17 from a few years ago. I need something uh, light, two-in-one and portable. Yeah, I mean, this certainly fits the bill. HP makes some good stuff as well from their Elite Book line. And we're going to look at some later this year. We're going to, the Dragonfly, one of my favorites, another one to look at. But again, Lenovo has their two-in-one. We're going to hopefully get the X1 Carbon or the X1 two-in-one, which is what they're calling it now instead of the Yoga. We're going to look at that. So there are a lot of competition. But again, the, the, the latitude here brings a nice, unique look here. The build quality here is first rate. I mean, this thing is a, it's a, it's built like a tank. It's beautiful to look at. And that's not something we can normally say on business laptops. The aesthetics are not the number one priority. This actually is something I would use on a daily basis and say, wow, that's a pretty slick looking laptop. And that's it. I prefer, I prefer uh, cool and quiet. And then the super high performance, David. Yeah, and that's why some people would look at this. 
the average consumer will be taken in by the benchmarks and say, well, oh, it didn't score this high on the single core, on the multi-core. The bottom line is these are certainly fast enough for doing the things that this is designed to do. Office work, email, web browsing, and it does it well, cool, and quiet. And I think that's the sell here. Um, now, the pricing, again, not consumer-based pricing. So just don't compare apples to oranges. If you're going to look at the Spectre, that is a consumer brand. XPS is a consumer brand, although very high-end in terms of the price. But it is a consumer brand at the end of the day, although businesses can use them. But they're going to look at something like this. And why not have something that looks nice like this and has a great zero lattice keyboard like this? And I think that's where the, the sell is. I think that's where it is. And that's at least my opinion. So far, I had a pretty nice turnout so far. You know, we have uh, pretty nice. A number of people, concurrent viewers, over 100 at some points. So that's been pretty good. Again, I'll leave this up as a replay as well. So we'll get our multi-core score here very soon. It's almost done. And so far, it's very zippy, very snappy, very fluid, very nice. I mean, again, you're not going to get all the things you're going to get on, a say, an Asus, a ZenBook, for instance. The high refresh rate, you're not going to get the... The H series, they're not going to put that in here. We got a super chat from our good friend, Andy Kyler. Always doing a great job. I appreciate that. From one Andrew to another. I appreciate that. So there is an efficiency curve uh, manufacturers should aim for where efficiency slash power and performance meet at the most optimal spot. Have some good quiet fans and that are not audible in the annoying ranges. And right now we're within those ranges, right? So never overly hot. I didn't see anything that's going to say, wow, that's going to, that's a really alarming temperature here. I didn't see that so far. I didn't hear fans to say, wow, that's really annoying. Now I am hearing them now. And again, this is not the use case for a laptop like this. This is where all the cores are going multi-core, 100% CPU performance here. And you're not going to, this is not going to be the general use. When you're doing Microsoft Office, you're doing a spreadsheet, Word document, stuff like that, even a PowerPoint presentation, you're not going to hear these fans like this. So it sh at least you shouldn't. So hopefully that'll be good. Uh, so clearly the refresh rate doesn't matter. And that is really one of the things I wanted to drive. So why doesn't it have the high refresh rate, the variable refresh rate, 120 hertz? Because nobody, these business users don't need it. And I think the Lockwood Legal Group is a good case in point here where you don't need it, right? I think you, you're looking for great battery life, especially if you're on a business trip or you just need the longevity. You don't want to have to plug in all the time. And I think this is it. All right, we got a score here of our multi-core 8250, which is pretty good for this laptop. Again, I'm not expecting this to be a powerhouse to play AAA titles in terms of games and stuff. That's not what this is designed to do. I'm not even doing 4K video editing on this. You could do 1080p without a problem on this, but that's not what this laptop is designed to do. All right, so that's that. I'm going to do the single core. I'll save that for the, the full review. Let's get a sound test. Of course, we like to have good audio, whether a business user or not. Let's uh, unplug this and let's do the sound test next. This does have quad speakers with Wave Max audio. Let me put it on me for a second as I load in Epidemic Sound here. Okay. And we'll, we can compare it to the MacBook Pro, although, again, you know, that, that's going to be a grad of six speakers. That's probably the best in the business, if not the best. I'll tell you what, I'm really liking this keyboard quite a bit. Okay, I'm logged in to Epidemic Sound. Okay, let's put it back over here. And in fact, what, let's just put a top down here. And I'm going to um, close that. All right, so let me go to my saved sounds. Let's do one that I like to test the bass on. That's the one that I like to do. So let's go to uh, Quite Unique by Tiger Blood Jewel. Okay, and I'm going to turn the volume all the way up here. So right now it's on 100%. I don't know if this has Dolby Vision or Dolby Access app. 
I think this is more like the. Yeah, I think this will we can do it in the set the sound stage, but let's keep it on the normal whatever out of the box it is right now. And I think there is an equalizer in the settings, but let's uh, let's let's listen to this and then you tell me what you think, and then we could probably bring out the MacBook Pro when we're done with that. So I'm gonna put this over here. This will tell you the decibel level here. Okay, so let's listen to it. Pretty good, pretty good. But let's uh, bring out the MacBook Pro just to get an idea side by side. Actually, you know what? Let's do the XPS 14. I'm, I'm curious. Let's see. Let's see the, the two side by side sound wise. Let me put it on me for a second and then we'll do the MacBook Pro. Okay. Okay, let me rewind that. All right, so let's go top down here. And what I'll do, I'll put this in here. So... Okay, so let's listen to the sound and then we can get an idea. I think this sounds better. I think the latitude sounds better in my opinion. What do you think? Let me know. Yeah, I agree. All right, so let's bring out the MacBook Pro. Let me wipe it down because everybody said how greasy it was. It does collect a lot of fingerprints, I'll tell you that. Okay, so... Let me go epidemic sound. Let's make sure the sound is on all the way up in the volume. All right, so let's go to like, save sounds. Okay, let's rewind that. Let's rewind this one. All right, let's give this a listen. Let's line these up. Okay, let's do it. Thank you. 
Okay, that was the Latitude 9450. Now, now this is the MacBook. <laughs> For those that need me to say it, this is the Latitude 9450. Now this is the Apple MacBook Pro. I think the Apple MacBook Pro wins that one. But I got to tell you, the Latitude 9450 sounds pretty nice. One of the better sounding Windows laptops. And I want to thank uh, Prescott Lagarde for the $10 Super Chat. Thank you for all your excellent reviews. Not just this one. Apologize for not contributing sooner. Your videos are incredibly thorough, detailed, and helpful. And thank you. No, thank you, Prescott, for the support. I do really appreciate that. So, so, so what do we know? Apple has the better speakers. I don't think there's a question about that, but I do have to give credit to uh, Dell because I think these actually are really good. And I like them actually better than the XPS 14, a little bit better. Sounds a little bit more oomph, a little bit more fuller. Although the XPS 14 considered pretty good as well for Windows, this is even better. And I'm really impressed with that. So what do I think so far? What did we learn? Cool, quiet. I'm expecting really good battery life. Of course, I won't be able to test that right now. We need to do our full testing. That takes a few days, obviously. I will report that in my full review. But we have a really nice display here, and we get really nice overall aesthetic. So I think it's a winner so far. Now, again, we can talk all day about the price. Like I said, business-focused. They will get discounts. We're not. It's not, not an issue at this point for consumers I think for businesses looking at a good laptop to buy for their fleet or even a small to medium business to buy one or two or maybe just one, whatever, uh, you will certainly like this. I think this is going to fit the bill, again, especially to do office work and stuff like that. But, of course, I want to know what you think. You got to give it to Apple. The science behind their sound is unmatched. I agree. Do we go over price yet? Yeah, I talked about it. I just talked about it again. Very high prices for these are business. So if you look at HP Elite Books, you look at the ThinkPads, this is not no, no different here. <coughs> Excuse me, a little dry throat. Isn't the Mac your main daily driver? I use it pretty much every day, although it's not my main. It's it it's one of uh, one or two that I use. So Right now, I rotate Windows laptops for testing, so I can't really say I one is the main laptop. Right now, I was testing the XPS 14. I'm up testing another couple other laptops that I can't even talk about, but I will very soon, so I can't get into more detail. But suffice it to say, the MacBook is a part of my arsenal. I do a lot of video editing on it in DaVinci Resolve and even Final Cut Pro, so I do use the Mac for that. So again, if it's the right tool for the job, I certainly recommend it. Now, I did pay out of pocket with my own money for that MacBook Pro. I spent over $3,000. In fact, I think it was $3,100 plus tax. I think it's like $3,300 all in here in Las Vegas. So very expensive for the MacBook. Do I think it's overpriced? Absolutely. But at the same time, it does get the job done, what I need it to do, and for the right tool of the job, again, I will ignore the price for that point as long as I can get the job done. That's what it seems to be. Apple got rid of the capacitive row. I don't understand why Dell added it. Seems like not many people like it. We'll be surprised if it's on their computers next year. My take is they tried something bold. They tried to hit a home run. Whether they hit a home run or not is yet to be seen. Uh, I don't mind it. I prefer the physical keys. I would be, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Put it this way: if this is what we see on the XPS line next year, um, this is a really a maybe a, like a little of a crystal ball to see where they're going. This is, I think, is the right 
the right blend here, right? You still get the zero last keyboard. You get that really nice haptic touchpad, but you also get the physical function row that a business user would need. So I think this is the right blend. Pair in, throw in these really great quad speakers, really nice display. Maybe they'll throw in an OLED option. Again, not a major deal. I think not a big deal for a business user. We don't need the high refresh rate. You don't need the, the, the all the bells and whistles for the, those things. You want the great battery life. You want good sound. You want a great keyboard experience and a great touchpad experience. And, and the fact that it looks nice is a nice bonus as far as I'm concerned. But this might be it. Is your MacBook the... No, I have the M3 Max, uh, Nadine. So I have the 14-inch M3 Max. It's the mid-tier M3 Max. So I didn't go all out because it would be too loud with the fans and, of course, the heating issues that it has. But Nadine, if you're going to do editing, M3 Pro will be the way to go. I wouldn't even do the M3. I would do the M3 Pro. If you can, M3 will be fine for basic stuff if you're doing video editing, but I think if you could spend a little bit more, go for the M3 Pro. Wonder why they don't slap a 99.5 watt hour battery on all their computers that the one thing I wish it had that the XPS 16 has. Well, there's a few reasons for that. Room, number one, it'll be hard to put a 99 watt hour battery in this. You have to make it a little bit bigger. And then again, Heat is going to be an issue. Constraints, is physical size is going to be an issue. And, and I, from what I understand, and again, take it for what it's worth, but the reason they went with the capacitive row on the XPS line is supposedly to fit all those things in it. Well, you know, to make better thermals, your thermals were okay on it. I mean, that's fine. Could they put a physical row? Oh, yeah, they could put it back in. I, I don't see why they couldn't next year. We'll see. We'll see. At the end of the day, a 99.5 watt hour battery is almost a legal limit. I think 100 would be the legal limit to take on an airplane. So you're pushing the boundaries. And again, weight, size is all going to be considerations that have to be taken into account, right? I don't. I didn't think about the lack of room. You know, it'd be great, right? We'd all put these really big batteries in it, but it would add to the overall weight. And right now, it's not the lightest convertible out there. The lightest 14 inch out there. So just you know, keep you know, we have to keep it within reason, right? Because not everybody is going to want to lug around almost four pounds or whatever it would be, or over four pounds, closer to five pounds with a bigger battery in it. It's just matter. Is a two in one? So it's a two in one. So weight is a factor. I, I agree, David, on that. So yes, that is something you need to cons be concerned with. Absolutely. So we looked at some of the benchmarks here. I only a few of them, but I will run more of them. Obviously, in the in the video, I will test more thermals. Obviously, I'll run the battery life test, all my benchmarks on that. I will bring you the metrics on the display. All that's coming. But the bottom line is, build is bar none excellent. The, the aesthetics look fantastic. It does have the physical row that a lot of people want. So you know what? It's looking good. I talk too much now, but recently found your channel. It's great. Glad I caught you on the live stream. I basically watched all of your videos in the last five days. Great. Well, welcome, Lockwood Legal Group. And I appreciate that. Um, as a lawyer, you do talk a lot, I'm sure, as a, your profession. Uh, so yes, I would, um, and that's a good thing, right? Uh, I would, I do appreciate you checking out the channel. All right, I think we're done. I mean, I don't know if we're going to go any further at this point. I got a lot of testing to do. Now, a couple of things before we go. Yes, it does have pen support. I showed it earlier. And I, I don't have the Dell pen here, but I do have a pen here. And you can see it does work, or I have the wrong one, I think. I picked up the wrong one. So here we go. So it does have a pen. It does work. So if you want to take notes on this, and again, this is a convertible, and I probably will end it on here once we're done here. But you can see you have all these things you can do with the pen. Let me see here. Let's go to the journal or whatever they call this thing, this Microsoft app here. And you can actually take notes and do everything. Thank you, William. And I just will show you one little example here. Unless I have to log in, I'm not going to waste my time. But you can use a pen. Now, they will offer that as an option, as an accessory, I'm sure. So you can use that. I think I have to log into my Microsoft account, but we'll see. So that's loaded. I think that's downloading. Anyway, I think you get the drift. You could do OneNote. You can do whiteboarding. You can do all sorts of things on this. I think that is going to be 
uh, nice feature again when you have the pen and so forth. So those are just some of the things that you would want to do. The brightness of the screen is really good so far. Again, I'll have to do it. And again, this is loading in all those stuff, uh, but we'll talk about it. I promise you, I'll give you examples in the upcoming review. So pen support is, of course, part of this. All right. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, William. Thank you, everybody. Lockwood Legal Group for contributing today. I really do appreciate it. I will see everybody in the next video. We got the Asus Zen Book, a couple of them, one AMD, one Intel uh, that we're going to be looking at that won't break the bank. OLED displays that is coming up. X1 Carbon. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the one with the, the Sensel trackpad on that. So we'll see. And a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't talk about. Until next time, everybody, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.